kickoff day to all of our FTC friends and first friends all over there uh, around the world. We are so excited to be bringing you the uh, sort of the Andy Mark after party for the 2018-2019 uh, FTC kickoff. Uh, Rover Ruckus is going to be a super awesome game. Really, really excited about it. Um, we've been working on the game field here for a bit more than a year now. Um, going through all of the initial design, the, the creative process, getting things through for manufacturing and, and getting them ready so that we have landers and craters on the shelf ready to go. Um, we know that a lot of you, a lot of the teams out there have been pre-ordering. All of those boxes are going to leave uh, Indiana here either Monday or Tuesday. Um, so you guys should have those before the end of the week. Um, we are really, really excited to get these things out there and into your hands. Um, so, uh, without further uh, delay, uh, let's kind of get into a bit of the field tour for this year's game, Rover Ruckus. What I sort of think is sort of the, the hallmark, the, the big marquee element on the field this year is the lander. Uh, this is something that you know took us a, a really long time to design. We knew that we had to get both the aesthetic right and we had to get the the functionality right. We knew that robots were going to be climbing on this thing. We knew that robots were going to be hanging off of this, um, and it was going to be a huge part of gameplay. And we had to get that right. Um, so working with the team at first, working with the game design committee, we went back and forth on this over and over and over again to make sure that we'd be able to get it right. And we did uh, sort of over the summer when we had some of the final articles um, in place, we did a bunch of load testing, a bunch of evaluation on uh, the lander here. So one of the things that we knew that was going to be sort of the most important test case were from these climbing hooks here. And so we put an absurd amount of weight on these climbing hooks to make sure that this thing would survive and, and be at its peak performance all the way through a tournament and through everything that you guys are doing um, at, your, at your schools, at your shops, wherever you guys practice. Um, so one of the things, you know, so we did a couple of things. You know, we, we put some weight on these lander hooks. Excuse me so that we could test you know, how much the, the lander could hold. We did some life cycle testing. Um, and one of the things that we found was that these lander hooks and, and the lander overall can take weights north of 400 pounds before anything sort of breaks or comes loose or flies off. Um, and, and so we did that across two robots. So two robots loaded on this thing, um, two simulated robots, um, and we just kept adding weight until something broke. Um, and they broke uh, between 207 pounds and 232 pounds um, on each side of the lander. So north of 400 pounds on the lander. Um, so that was one of the things that gave us a ton of confidence in this design and, and these materials and the things that we've got going on here. Now, one thing to kind of keep in mind is the lander works as a system. The whole thing is sort of needed to be that strong. And so one of the things we're going to go through when we do our unboxing uh, of the, the field elements a little bit later in today's broadcast um, is we're going to show some of the items to kind of you know be careful of, keep in mind um, while you're sort of opening the box, taking things out and getting things ready for uh, your, your assembly. Once you get them assembled, this thing is rock solid um, and it's, it is a, a really cool piece. So that's a little bit on the lander. Um, a couple other things. The here at Animark, we're always trying to explore new manufacturing methodologies, things that are new to us, things that we haven't ever done here. And so one of the things that gave us a little bit of a trouble, you know, sort of early on in the design process, was uh, this t the the top uh, dome here for the lander. We had a, a number of different ways that we were thinking about going about this, um, and so eventually we had to, we we sort of started to explore. Uh, a new manufacturing methodology, uh, a thermal form or, or vacuum form uh, to get this into the shape that it is. This starts as one flat sheet of material and then it is heated up and formed over a, a template um, and then cut from that sheet, the, the holes are put into it and you know we get a piece that's 
really strong, really durable. Um, it's going to hold up, you know, really nicely to all the game pieces that you, you know, all the teams out there are dumping onto these things. Um, but just a really durable, really strong part, um, and it's uh, been kind of one of our favorites as we go through the, the design process here. Uh, one of the other things that we're kind of excited is, and, you know, we're always trying to keep in mind, you know, the experience for, you know, somebody who's trying to build this, trying to put it together. Um, we try to, you know, keep things as common and consistent as we can. Um, one of the little details, all of our hardware um, is, you know, falls into just a couple different uh, sizes and lengths. So, you know, when the instruction manual says, go get the inch and three quarter bolt, there's not an inch and a half bolt, there's not a two inch bolt, there's nothing really around that same size. Similar to our main bolts here, they're three quarter inches long. Um, there's nothing near that either. Um, so really trying to make sure that you know it's it's easy to find which hardware, which fastener is needed for whatever step of the process you know you might be on. Uh, we also went um, we we removed some of the rivets from the field construction, but we went with some of these push-in rivets. So they look sort of like a, a bar, kind of a. a uh, upside down Christmas tree um, so as you you know slide them in they don't want to you know pull back out um, and these just kind of create a really clean really smooth look um, and we didn't need a big heavy-duty you know faster we didn't need a big rivet you know something like a plastic push and rivet you know was all that was needed we save weight on the lander makes it easier to carry around we save on um, you know some of the material costs makes it you know more economical for all the teams and everybody out there trying to buy them um, so a lot of really cool features, you know, here on the lander. Um, as you guys can see, there is a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a weevil wobble uh, to uh, the lander. That's sort of, uh, this is not necessarily something that we set out to do is to, to put a little bit of a shake into it. Um, but when you put yours together and, and you kind of go, you know, you're wiggling it around, that is something that's expected. That's something that's kind of a, a known thing. Um, and that's okay. That's just sort of part of the challenge. It's part of, you know, what all the teams out there are going to have to interact with this year. So um, there's also uh, another new process for us is we have the word top stamped into all of our corner brackets. Um, help orient those and make sure that you, you can put them on the, the lander in the right orientation. Um, that's something that we haven't done before. We've just sort of tried to put markings on them or just you know try to communicate through the assembly instructions. This end goes up. Well, to try to make that whole build process a little bit easier, now we started to stamp you know, some directions right onto the part. So trying to use these parts to help tell the story of how the assembly is supposed to go. Um, but, you know, the, the lander, you know, the, the whole field is really a big team effort here at Andy Mark. Um, Liz, um, she works with the assembly instructions. She's a you know, graphic designer. Um, she has a whole bunch of different, you know, things in and throughout the development process. You know, she developed up these uh, stickers that go on uh, the size of the lander help identify you know that this goal here that this cargo hold uh, is for the silver the, the game balls um, this cargo hold here is for the gold for the cubes um, so you know so really cool stickers I think they're, they're really neat they're a clear back sticker um, if I didn't need them on my lander I might cut them out and put them on my laptop or my book bag or you know my binder or you know any sort of the cool things but I think they're really cool stickers um, there's also there's another sticker in the box um, kind of like an Andy Mark mission patch for the year so we'll get more on that in a second um, oh off camera thanks Brett stagehand Brett uh, help me out so the sticker that's in the box here um, you know trying to go after that mission patch sort of look um, we've got elements um, you know from all sorts of different things so we're, we're hoping you guys are going to like the sticker this year. You guys always seem to like our stickers a whole bunch, from Relic stickers, from Beacon stickers, to the first launch Andy Mark mission patch. Very cool. All right, so camera, if you wouldn't mind following me down here, we have sort of the second big element on uh, the game field this year, um, and that is the crater. Now, these crater segment pieces, they all um, zip tie together. They're um, really easy, really quick to assemble. Um, they have a clip that holds them onto uh, the field perimeter rail um, so that they stay in place really nicely uh, on the field. And these things are really strong. Now, I wouldn't advise you know jumping on them, but they'll hold up to that too. Um, they'll pretty well hold up to anything your robot you know throws at them. Um, we've tested these you know with big sledgehammers we've tested these um, you know all all sorts of different ways 
and after we couldn't break one sort of in the shop here, uh, we took one out and stuck it under the wheel of somebody's car. Um, it did lose to the car. And we thought that once we got to that point, we had figured out that these were gonna be plenty strong enough for an FTC robot. Um, but there's some cool stuff here. So uh, they have kind of their, their, their two different faces, um, you know, so that robots, you know, can kind of experiment with how they're gonna drive in and out of the crater or, or if they will. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, we were excited about. There's a, a new sort of surface texture here that we haven't put on any of our uh, injection molded parts before. So we have a little bit of a rougher surface, give robots a little bit of a benefit getting up and over uh, the crater walls. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're excited to see what teams, you know, do to figure out how to get uh, up and over these craters. And if you figure out how to go over sort of the steep side, the outside here, you know, then you can always use these two segments in the middle of the crater here to sort of drive back outward and you're still sort of dealing with that same style, you know, that, that same face. Um, which is part of, part of the reason that, you know, these two segments here are flipped around backwards. Um, so as you're going through your assembly, kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, that there are two segments that are backwards. Uh, it does create a little bit of an asymmetry to uh, the crater itself. So there are uh, four segments and then our three segment in the middle and then another three segment arc over on the side. So pay attention to the field setup guide for how to position uh, the craters uh, on both ends of the field. Um, both are identical and then just positioned at two different spots uh, within the field. So starting in the crater are the uh, game pieces for this year. So for anyone who got a um, Rover Ruckus game set with and without uh, game pieces, the balls and cubes are the things that you know were either included or not included in those kits. Um, all of the pre-sales got some combination of lander and crater, and then the choice was whether or not you got the balls and cubes, the silver and gold. Um, so there's a few things that were talked about in the kickoff video about these. You can only hold two, um, and it doesn't matter if it's silver or, or gold, you can only hold two game pieces total, um, unless you're here with me in the crater, um, in which case you can sort of run the around and get home, come in contact with all sorts of them. Um, so that's gonna be a cool thing, see how robots come in here and collect game pieces, um, and then go out and have a little bit better luck than I do, uh, putting those into uh, the lander. So that's sort of our, our brief uh, field tour video here. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the comment section uh, on uh, the video here. I don't know if on Twitch are the comments below you or to the side, or to the side, this side, my side, okay, cool. Uh, so put the comments over here. Um, well, Ruth uh, is watching those. Um, and if we have any good you know, questions, we'll take those uh, kind of during the this broadcast here. I'll, additionally though, uh, we might save some of the questions for the end and have kind of a little bit of a longer Q and A portion uh, a little bit later in uh, the show. So let's now, we're gonna kind of go to one of the next parts of our show. And for all of you who are gonna be looking to get a Rover Ruckus game field, um, we wanted to kind of go through and open the box and kind of show you what, how this is gonna arrive and kind of what to expect once your Rover Ruckus game field uh, shows up at your door. So this is the box for the lander. Uh, the crater and game pieces come in separate boxes. Um, so this big box here, this is just the lander. It weighs about 30 pounds. Um, and so once we get into this guy, you'll notice that there is a, a, a tag on one of the flaps here. Uh, the way the lander is packaged, you do definitely want to sit it flat on a table like this and then open this flap first. And there'll be some big uh, staples here uh, that hold this whole thing together. Uh, but like the magic of, through the magic of television, those have already been taken care of. And so we open the box just like so. Um, and sort of on the, the inside here, one of the first things to keep in mind is uh, the Andy Mark pamphlet. Um, we've got some cool uh, flyer things. We've got some cool new products, um, things that we're talking about in here. But also, and this is something that a few people have told us they missed. You're going to want to pull out this yellow card and stop and wait. On here we have our link 
for where you can get the assembly instructions. Uh, those do not come in the box, so those are digital only. Um, so go to andymark.com slash FTC and you can get your assembly instructions there. But also in the little flyer here is your sticker packet. Uh, stickers I was talking about earlier, I think they look really good. Uh, I think they're super cool. Um, so those are in this package and they are gonna be something you wanna, gonna wanna hold on to uh, and we get back to them a little bit later in our assembly. We also get one of our Andy Mark Mission Patch stickers. So these things are super nifty. They look really good on just about any t-shirt. You can pretend like you're going to space. Um, so there's some cool things on the flyer here. We talk about um, some of the different products that Animark has specifically for uh, the FTC uh, world. Um, we have our Nevera Sports, some really, really powerful uh, gearboxes, all manner of compliant wheels, motors, all sorts of different cool stuff, tile runners. Um, but we are gonna get to a little bit more of our product line a little bit later in the show. Stay tuned for that. Now, into the box sort of prim and proper. Um, so you notice the first thing that's uh, here on the box is our gray top dome. Um, again, really strong piece. Um, but like I was saying, it's got a little bit of a wiggle to it while it's um, you know completely by itself. When you put it into the assembly, you know this works with all of the other pieces to stay nice and strong. Thank you, Ruth. At the other end of the box, we have a big hunk of cardboard padded up. Uh, this is a bit of a space fill. Um, we've got some weird things. Um, this, you can sort of get rid of. Now, next in the box, we have uh, the lander legs. Uh, so those come side by side. Um, I don't know, Brett, if you can uh, wiggle your way in here a little bit closer. Maybe I'll have to hold it up. But uh, Andy Mark works hard, not just on the design, but also on the packaging. So if you notice, there's a, another pad here to help hold everything in place. We've got our lander legs, and then those are held in place by the caps on uh, the corner brackets. So everything is held in here nice and sturdy. You know, we try to minimize how much things can wiggle around. Um, the lander legs are made out of our peanut extrusion. Um, we've used this on a number of different FTC fields, starting all the way back with uh, the rescue game and, and those big mountain pieces. Um, and we've also seen that a lot of teams have used these in subsequent years as building material. The cool part about these is they are set for uh, quarter 20 self-threading, thread rolling, thread forming, D all of the above sort of screws. Um, and so they make for a really, really good building material. Next up, we have another piece of fold pack. Be careful of the camera. Um, that's just a hunk of cardboard. We can get rid of that. Recycle uh, as you can. Uh, next layer in the box, we have four really big zip ties. These are 175 pound capacity zip ties. Um, these go on the inside of the lander and help give it all the strength that it needs to hold up to uh, the FTC game. Next up, going down further into the box, we have these big corner brackets. These are some of the biggest sheet metal parts that we've ever put into an FTC game. Uh, they do have a specific top and bottom to them, um, as noted again by the word top stamped into them. Uh, and so this was actually a bit of a, a cool design story. So we, we had these corner brackets, we sort of knew what they were supposed to look like. Um, and then uh, we sort of got wind of, of what the teaser video was going to be. So then we went back through and we added this line of holes into them so that we could better match what was in the teaser video. Um, because we, need, we knew we needed some aesthetic element here to break up this big surface, this big face here. Um, and that was just all of the inspiration that we needed. So we're like, we'll, we'll continue to make this thing go and we'll, we'll add these parts here to make it look more like the teaser video. So we've got four of those, some big components there. Next up, we've got some paper. Uh, this helps prevent things from being scratched. Um, I'm trying to play catch with Brett off camera. And there's a reason that I don't play sports ball and I do the robots because none of those passes connected. Um, so next up, we have uh, some of the smaller components in the field. So these are uh, the drop away floors 
um, that go into uh, the bottom of the cargo holds on the lander. Uh, so these are for the gold, for the cubes. Um, and one thing that we can show over here on our lander real fast, maybe Brett, um, the way that field reset's gonna work for this game is after there's a whole bunch of uh, gold in the cargo hold, um, and after the robots have hung up on here, robots are gonna be taken off the field, and then the field reset crew will grab this ring, and we have a multi detect pin, and the floor drops away. Now, we also have a pin on the other side, which these two work in conjunction to hold everything together, which is why my floor didn't kind of pop out as it should have. But you guys get the idea. Field reset. We're thinking about you guys as well. We're trying to make sure that once the goal is filled, you guys have a nice, easy time of resetting the field. All right. So back over here at our box a little bit. The next parts to come out of the box are the internal panels. These are our short panels. Uh, these come in two flavor, red and blue. Now these are upside down there real quick. Um, you wanna keep in mind that these, you know, they do have an up and a down sort of denoted by the two holes here. We reference those in the assembly instructions. And th this is one of the big places that you guys are gonna need to be careful as you're going through the unboxing and as you're getting the lander ready for build. These tabs over here, I don't know what my set crew is trying to do, but like, hold on. Um, these tabs over here are something that you guys wanna keep in mind. Um, be careful with these tabs. We had some of these break off in some of the very early shipments uh, that we sent out. We have since gone through and did a little bit of repackaging inside the box here to make sure that these tabs uh, survive and, and get to you. Um, but this is one of the parts to not just kind of throw across the floor and throw across the room when you get them out of the box. Um, be careful with these parts here. I love my crew, they're adorable. Um, next out of the box, we have um, some little, you know, kind of more parts that are sort of uh, left inside here, uh, some of our smaller components. We have our under tile disc, four inches for this year. We have a whole bunch of them working together, one on each foot of the lander. Um, so these are one of the things you don't really see, but uh, these are working hard uh, to, to anchor the lander legs to uh, sort of the soft tiles, to the, the field itself. Um, these go under the tiles um, and help anchor everything in, in, in space. Yes. Um, they use uh, the same size hardware as we've used on the balancing stones and on other things in the past. So if for whatever reason uh, you need a spare or of these guys, the six inch versions of these from past years will absolutely work as well uh, for the lander. Next, going down into the box, we have the two long walls. Uh, that make up the interior panels on uh, the game field. These are some of the ones, again, they have these folded over flanges, these folded over tabs. You know, again, be careful with these. Um, they are, once they get built into the assembly, uh, they're really nice and strong. Um, but here, sort of floating around in free space, uh, they are uh, a little susceptible to being broken off. Um, so, make sure that you guys can go through and, and kind of get all the parts out of the box uh, nice and make sure that we are on track for doing a good build uh, with those. So I'll give those both to Brett. Thank you, Brett. Next up in the box, we have our other two uh, drop away floors uh, now on the silver side. Um, two more pieces. These are made out of our PVC foam like we've used in past uh, game fields. Uh, some cool things there. Now down at the bottom of the main box, we have our four polycarbonate clear uh, side walls, our, our exterior side panels. Um, thing to keep in mind, there is a protective film on both sides of these panels. Uh, so as you're going through your assembly, you're gonna wanna make sure you get both of the protective films off. Um, but yeah, good strong solid panel. Those are gonna live up to the durability and those are gonna take all manner of abuse uh, throughout the entire season. Um, and then we have one more piece of cardboard left in the box. 
And this one has all of our hardware kits in it. And so we've got leg struts for the lander legs. We've got our quick release pins. Nice big hardware bags. And one of the things that we try to do with these, uh, with the hardware bags this year, is we tried to put them together in sequence. So you'll notice that we have hardware bag, they're listed, hardware bag one, two, and three. Uh, and so what we're trying to do there is help you guys out through the assembly steps process. Hardware bag one goes first, and then two, and then three. Um, so it's a little bit easier to kind of, you know, go through the assembly process and, um, you know, get the right hardware for what you need during those steps. We have a bag of churro. Now, churro is one of our most favorite building materials with here at Andy Mark. It's got a half inch hex. It's got a, a specific hole for a thread forming screw. Um, quarter 20. We really like Chiro. It's nice. It's easy to build with. Um, if people played rescue, they probably still have a whole bunch of Chiro lying around. These are specifically cut three inch sections of Chiro. Um, they are all used kind of throughout the lander. Um, but yeah, I think we just might have some really cool videos on how to work with Chiro. Um, but uh, we will link that down in the description of how to put a, th a screw into churro, even though it doesn't have threads, uh, out of the box. Uh, and we have some more cool, exciting uh, news on the churro front uh, just a little bit later. So we are going to take a bit of an awkward pause. Um, we are going to get the table cleared off here a little bit, and we're going to start talking about some products. Remember, if you guys have questions, put those in the comments. Ruth is looking for those questions. Um, and one more final note about the kind of unboxing and getting your field kit. If you have any issues, if something comes in broken, um, if something is missing, it is really important to do sort of a full, thorough, complete inventory of all of your parts. Um, again, you can find that in the first few pages of the assembly guide. Uh, we go through and list off every single part um, and where what hardware bag they're supposed to be in, how many of them you're supposed to get. Uh, so go through, do a careful inventory. If anything is missing or broken, please send us an email at customer service at andymark.com. Customer service at andymark.com. Uh, and our sales team will be more than happy to get whatever issue it is uh, sorted out, get you the replacement parts, get you the fixes, um, you know, whatever it needs to happen to get to make sure that you have the right parts, the right, you know, the good quality parts. Uh, to build your lander. So one more time, if you have any issues, um, after you kind of check everything out, do that inventory, shoot us an email, customer service at andymark.com, um, and we'll be happy to take care of that. All right, so now uh, we're gonna have a bit of a awkward pause. We're gonna clear the table off, and we're gonna start talking about some of our really cool brand new hot release for 2019 robot products. Churro, not just a delicious snack, but also an incredibly useful structural building component and great for low load axles. But if you're watching this video, you probably already know what churro is. You just want to know how to tap it. In its natural state, churro is a profile with a through hole all the way through it. That's why it's called a through hole. We're going to show you how to tap a churro. The process of tapping a part, whether it's churro, peanut, or any of our other parts, means you're adding threads to a hole that doesn't already have threads. For tapping a churro, we use what's called a self-threading screw. Some people call it thread rolling or thread forming, but it all means basically the same thing. Half inch churro uses quarter 20 screws, and churro light, 3 8 churro, uses 10 24 screws. They're smaller. Any body or any first robotics team can tap churro regardless of your skill set or tool set. In the first method, we're going to head on over to our old buddy, the bench vise. Since we're working with half inch churro, we're going to go ahead and chuck our 3 8 driver into the drill. Then we're going to set one of those quarter 20 screws inside the driver. It's especially helpful if you have a magnetic one, because then you don't have to worry about dropping any of the screws. Make sure your drill is in its low speed, high torque setting. Set the screw into the opening of the churro Put a little bit of oomph behind the drill and hit go.
You can choose to run that screw all the way into the churl or just a little bit. If you only partially tap the churl, that's fine. You can finish tapping it in your assembly later. For the second method, we're still gonna use our old buddy bench vise. But instead of using a drill, since many people don't have one, we're gonna use a ratchet and a 3 8 driver. Using this method is gonna take a bit more gusto than the drill method. Like with the first method, you can choose to tap the churro all the way or just partially. If you only tap it partially, that's fine. You can just save some of your workout for later. But Brett, I don't have a vice. I can't do it quite as nice. That's not true. And the last method, you can do it too. If you're tapping half inch churro, grab a half inch open-ended wrench. If you're tapping 3 8 churro, grab a 3 8 open-ended wrench. Hold the wrench and churro in one hand and the ratchet with the screw in your other hand. Begin tightening the screw into the churro. It might take a bit of coordination, it might even be easier if done with a friend, but anyone can tap a churro with this method. In the first two examples, we talked about tapping half inch churro. If you're working with churro light, 3 8 churro, you're gonna use 5 16 tools instead of 3 8 And there you have it, you've tapped some churro. You can see it in places like your local First Tech Challenge competition field, and even some of our products like the Evo Shifter and AM1 for You 3 chassis. Thanks for hanging out with us and watching the video. Follow us on social media to find out when we post more fun videos just like this one. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, hope you enjoyed that churro tapping video. Um, we are gonna talk now about some of our brand new uh, for 2018, 2019 FTC products. Uh, the development team here at Anuark has been hard at work trying to get some really cool stuff out there. But a lot of our ideas uh, come, from, come from you guys, come from the community. Um, you know, we go out to a lot of tournaments, um, you know, formerly the Super Regionals and the World Championship and a lot of you know, tournaments, a lot of state tournaments, you know, here and there. We try to ask people, what, you know, the question, how can we make this thing, this FTC thing, easier? How can we pull some of the friction and, and the frustration out of it? Um, and, and a lot of your answers are the things that we do um, moving forward. That's exactly where the Neverest motor came from and exactly where the nubs came from. So we greatly appreciate your uh, candid uh, responses to a lot of those questions. If there are issues with our products, we really like being able to know about those things and being able to, you know, correct for them. Um, but also, you know, we just want to try to make this idea of allowing you guys to, to really freely and, and quickly and, and comfortably sort of build those sketches that you made, you know, on, on paper, you know, on the whiteboard or whatever. The idea of being able to go from that whiteboard sketch, whatever that idea is, and, and being able to execute on that idea really quickly um, is something that we're really passionate about here at AmyMark. So um, with that, we'll get into some of the products. Um, there was one thing that came across uh, while we were at break. Um, we have two different sizes of our drop away floors. Um, we have a short one for the gold and a tall one for the silver. So just keep in mind that there are two uh, different ones there. Make it right. Um, so now, one of the, the single most asked for products um, that we had kind of through uh, the last couple years is to take our, uh, our HD four inch Mechanum wheel uh, that was sort of originally developed specifically for the FRC market. Uh, and bring that over to uh, an FTC build system and, and make sure that that can be something that FTC teams can work with really effectively. A lot of FTC teams took that wheel and integrated it over into their building systems, but it took a lot of work. It needed a conversion plate, a lot of hardware, some weird stuff. 
Um, so now we had you know sort of our, our concept car, our prototype model, sort of on display at championships, got a lot of really great feedback. A lot of people were really excited about it. So now we are happy to announce, unveil, launch for the first time ever, right here to you guys, the FTC specific four inch HD mechanum wheel. It uses the same steel plates and the same rollers as the existing HD mechanum wheels, but we completely went through and reevaluated and did a fairly significant redesign on the center core. We slimmed the wheel down. Um, so there used to be, you know, two standoff sections on either side. We brought those in because we know space is a huge premium on an FTC robot. So we shrunk that up a little bit. Um, the narrow dimension sort of th across through the middle of the wheel is an even number of millimeters because we know so many of the FTC uh, ecosystem is in the metric world. Um, and so it's 42 millimeters sort of across the middle here where you're gonna be putting nubs, uh, axles, bushings, spacers, all that kind of stuff through here. Um, so that just makes it even easier to build with within your, uh, within your robots. We have the uh, four hole pattern here, exact same that's on so many of our wheels and so many of the other products out there in the FTC ecosystem. So a 16 millimeter bolt circle um, with an eight millimeter hole. Um, but what, one of the things that's sort of new and unique for an Andy Mark product, that eight millimeter hole is exactly there for the boss on a nub. So you get a good centering feature um, between those two. Uh, make sure that the wheel will always run concentric um, with the axle that it's running on. Uh, but one of the things that we did, uh, sort of a new innovation, is that it, after, uh, after the 8mm portion, it's next down to a, just over a 6mm portion. Um, so what that means is you can put a nub on one side to drive it, like a 6mm D profile nub on one side to drive the wheel and make it spin. And you don't need uh, another nub or another spacer or something on the other side because if you run a 6mm axle or bolt all the way through, the other side here will self-support on that axle. Again, we're trying to make these things really easy to integrate within the robots, trying to make them, um, you know, just kind of work the way that you would hope that they would work. So this is something that we are really excited um, to be putting out there. Uh, it launched live on the webpage today. Um, so if you want to learn more, um, you can go look up product number 3919. Um, and you can get all of the information that you need uh, for the HD Mechanum wheels. Uh, and we also have these integrated into uh, a tile runner. So that way you can go out of the box, you can get a tile runner with the HD Mechanum wheels, all the spacers, all the setup that you need uh, to drive around the field really, really effectively. Uh, these wheels have a 200 pound load capacity per wheel. Um, Again, these were develop, developed for the FRC world, so these will take anything that an FTC robot will dish out um, and then some. It's like a 16G fall that you know these wheels would survive um, on an FTC platform. Uh, so it's really, really capable wheel. Really excited for you guys to you know start experimenting with it, playing with it, um, and seeing how you guys like it within your robots. All right, so we've got those there. Oh, and remember, they come in rights and lefts, and you need two rights and two lefts to make your robot drive correctly. So we have some documentation about the orientation that the wheels are supposed to go on, but keep that in mind that you need rights and lefts. So we'll leave those there. Uh, we have got some other things that we're, we're excited about. We have now some two inch Omni wheels. Um, so these are really nice and tiny. You can put them all, all sorts of different places. We have a slightly harder compound, sort of matches our uh, gray rollers like we've had in the past, but we also have some green wheels with some softer compounds. Maybe we have another green wheel. Yes. Um, and so these things have added traction, added grip, um, you know, so you can drive them around. Uh, and they, they have some interchangeable cores to them. So with these wheels, you can use either our half inch hex core or our 3 8 hex core. Now these work really great with Churro and these work really great with Churro Lite. Um, so these pop into the sides of the wheels. Uh, there's a small hex on the internal here, so you have to get those lined up, and then they drop in place like, like so. Um, and now you can have these wheels roll over a half-inch hex. So 
We're excited about these. Again, we know that packaging within an FTC robot is really critical. Um, it's one of the bigger challenges within FTC. Um, and so we're excited to be able to bring forward some new really small, low profile, two inch mechan uh, pff, Omni wheels. Again, the show's live. We have no idea what's going to happen next, except for what's on script. Speaking of the script, what's next on the script? Our starter kits. So um, we know that for a lot of FTC teams starting out, you guys want to get, you know, you want to send one check, one PO, and grab a whole bunch of stuff all in one big box. And so we have uh, sort of new for this year, we have our uh, FTC starter kits. And there's a whole lot of different options and variations with these. That's one of the things that we're really excited about. Depending on your budget, your existing materials, what you've already got, um, there's a whole lot of different options. So there's sort of three main components to uh, the FTC starter kit. Um, we have sort of like our first stage uh, would be the tile runner. Um, so there's a couple different variations on uh, the standard six wheel drive tile runner, the SD Mechanum tile runner, the HD Mechanum tile runner, or our tile runner GTO, which is a six wheel drive, uh, but uses our Neverest 20 orbital gear motors um, for a little bit higher end speed. Um, so we have those four tile runners to choose from. Then we have our second stage is our uh, three different S3 building system packages, so our simple superstructure system. Uh, and so we have our basic, no, our expansion, our basic, and our mega kit. Uh, and so depending on, uh, you know, if you have any of those components already, um, depending on, you know, you know, what, you know, where you're looking at, any of those three kits will offer a really substantial, you know, really beneficial way to go through and build um, your robot. And then finally, our, our sort of our final stage, uh, we have our what we call our foundation bundle. And so there's a lot of extra stuff, a lot of things that sort of make it so that you can build a full competition ready robot. Things like servos, more brackets, some chains, sprockets, um, all of the, the little things, you know, that are needed to kind of go through and build the rest of that robot. You know, adding mechanical systems, adding, you know, motion systems, you know, to all sorts of different, you know, parts of the robot. We have, um, never s 20 orbitals in there we have never s 60 classics so we just have a wide range of parts all sorts of different cool stuff we have a question from the chat danny ah very good uh pork roll pork roll seven wants to know can you convert the old cannon wheels to the new 3919s Yes, uh, so the can we convert the old mechanum wheels into the new mechanum wheel with the uh, bore? It's a little bit of a trick. Um, so the, the side rings are riveted on uh, with the nine rivets here to the plastic hub. So this plastic hub is the only component that changed. Um, but in order to swap out these components, you would need to drill out these rivets. And because the backside's in plastic, a lot of times when you drill a rivet out in plastic, you can go through and you can um, damage the the backside of the plastic component and that makes riveting on the next set really really difficult um so at this point we don't have the cores uh for sale um our recommendation is that you know to go through and grab a new set um but one of the things that you can do is with that new set your rollers your bolts any of those things you know you can keep those as spare parts for your new wheel um, so that, that way you have, you know, a, a good bit of spares in case, you know, you scuff the or, or wear down any of the surfaces here. Um, you know, but we're, like I said, we're, we're always looking for more suggestions. So if you guys, um, you know, are really looking for a conversion kit for the old wheels into the new wheels, um, you know, send us, a, send us an email. Um, Ruth, what would be the right email for customer suggestions? Uh, that would be customer support at andymark.com. There you go. So send an email at customer support at andymark.com. Email below. We'll put that in in post. Um, and, and we'll see what we can do with that. Customer service. Customer service. It'll get to us eventually. All right. Um, so we've got a couple more products that we want to highlight here. Um, one of them is uh, we have uh, to try to help you know, tournaments out. We have a new FTC sizing box. Uh, and so this is something that uh, we have developed, thank you, Brett. We've developed with uh, the First Tech Challenge. Um, and so they have approved uh, this sizing box as legal to be used at competition. 
Uh, and so this works in you know kind of a neat way. We have our base plate here that is exactly 18 inches by 18 inches. And then we have our archway that is also uh, 18 inches from the uh, top of the base plate to the underside of the arch and 18 inches left to right. Uh, so you can put your robot down on the base plate here, slide the arch uh, back and forth, make sure that it passes in both directions. Maybe we should have done it like this from the start. Um, slide it all the way across your robot uh, and you can help verify that it is uh, fully within uh, the size uh, you know that it's supposed to be according to the rule book so this is a great way that teams can help check their robot before they go to tournament um, and you may see these mm, excuse me you may see these out at uh, the tournaments uh, once you get there. So, uh, new cool thing, um, we're trying to you know just kind of help uh, make sure that we can kind of cover all aspects uh, of the tournament, just kind of make make lives easier wherever they may go. We're still new at this. All right, and now one of our uh, coolest new products. Um, is we have green anodizing on our peanut tube and our churro. Um, so we have, this is I believe the seventh color in our anodized line for the churro and peanut. Um, we've got red, blue, purple, gold, black, green. Um, we're really excited to be able to help teams, you know, throw a splash of color uh, into their robots. Both of these use quarter 20 uh, self-threading screws um, in through uh, the holes at the end. Um, they come in three foot lengths um, and they make for really good, really strong uh, building throughout robots. So the peanut and churro, nothing new here, but now we're excited to be able to launch them in green um, and just kind of help uh, all sorts of robots out there throw a little bit of splash of color, no matter what your team color may be. Um, hopefully we've got some anodized products that are pretty close to where you guys want to be. All right, so that's kind of our our big long list. Maybe we have some more questions from the, the Q&A. Uh, we have a rules related question that you might be able to answer, Danny. I may be able to try. So Corporal7 also mm. wants to know, if you have crossed the plane of the crater, then can you pick up as many pieces of debris as you like? So that would go down to which uh, definition of the rule that they use, if it's in or completely in. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one that would be. Um, th there are some, you know, depending on which rule and, and things, they, they do use those two definitions, you know, um, back and forth. So check the rule book for in versus completely in. Um, if you're breaking the plane, that would be considered in. Uh, if you need to be completely in, well, then you need to break the plane, transition your entire robot, um, and then sort of cease to break that plane once you are fully within uh, the crater itself. So uh, this is a great shameless plug for the first Q&A system. Um, so that should be opening up here in uh, shortly. Uh, and uh, take any sort of these technical rules related questions, um, put them in the first Q&A. That is the official way to get a question answered. Um, I haven't read the rule book in a while. Um, so I don't exactly know where uh, all the different things might be. Um, so to get an official answer, um, not some guy in an orange jacket guessing, um, take a look at the, the Q&A, try reading the manual, give the manual to somebody else to read, um, and you guys should be able to come up with that answer here pretty quickly. So Danny, tell us your thoughts on the game. <laughs> Okay, um, I am. I'm super excited about uh, this year's game. Um, from the first time that I uh, heard about the theme um, that we were going to space, I was running up and down the office um, like the the little blue astronaut from the Lego Movie, um, just yelling about spaceships. Uh, I originally went to school for aerospace engineering, so this is absolutely right up my alley. Um, this one really sort of played into my hand uh, significantly, and I've, I've been trying to get all my colleagues as excited as I am about the game. Um, and and it's, it's really, really cool. I'm, I'm excited that uh, the lander looks like a lander. I'm excited that the crater looks like a crater. Um, you know, and, and that, you know, it's, it's gonna be sort of easy to explain this game to people. You take the, the game pieces and you move them from the crater and you put them in the lander. Um, and, you know, at the end of the match, you know, the, the lander can blast off back into space and, and return those samples back home. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm crazy excited about this game. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, it's going to be neat to see what everybody does with descending from the lander at the start of the match and climbing back up there. I think we'll get some last second heroics, you know, late in matches. Um, that's always really fun and exciting to see. So, all right. Well, uh, that sound means that we are coming to a close. Uh, yeah, uh, that we are uh, run out of time for this week's edition of AM and the PM. We are happy uh, to have shared uh, a little bit of your kickoff Saturday with everybody out there. Um, so for uh, the team here at Mark, for Brett and Ruth behind the camera, for myself, uh, good luck this season, happy kickoff. Uh, and we are excited to see what everybody does. Good luck this year. Good night.